Hey everyone, Bill here again with part 14 of my Piano for Absolute Beginners series, taking you from absolute scratch, no piano knowledge at all, to the point at which you have a good basis of skills and can read piano music in treble and bass clef, right and left hand. Now in this episode we're going to be learning about a new time signature, 6-8, which is quite cool because it's what we call a compound time signature, and also picking up a couple of new scales to practice because, you know, we all love scales. Okay, if you're new then the first First thing you should do is check out the series playlist and start at one of the earlier tutorials or even the very first one depending on what level of knowledge you're coming in at. You'll find a link to the playlist in the description fields underneath this tutorial. If that doesn't apply to you then that's cool, let's get going. Okay so as I said we're going to look at this new time signature 6-8. Here is a single bar of 6-8 time, and as you can see, I've divided it into six quavers, or eighth notes, which is what the time signature suggests the underlying beat is, okay? Six beats, and each beat is a quaver long, an eighth note long. Now you might be saying, hold on, hold on, six quavers is the same as three crotchets. Six eighth notes is the same as three quarter notes, yeah? And we've already come across three four time, three crotchets to the bar, so if a bar of 3-4 and a bar of 6-8 are basically the same length, what's the difference between them? Well, it's a bit like the situation we've already come across with 2-4 and 4-4 time. Yes, 6-8 and 3-4 both have bars that are 6 quavers long, if you want to see it that way, but there's a big difference in how we beat them out and, crucially, in how they're stressed. Now, if you count 6-8 six, in sixes, and I'll explain that if in a second because there is another way of doing it, you generally stress beat 1 and beat 4 with slightly more stress on 1 than 4. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can hear, that's actually a very different stress pattern from 3-4, which generally just stresses the first beat of the bar. Now the interesting thing with 6-8 is that you have a choice about how you count it. And it's a choice that's affected by all sorts of things like the style of music and personal choice and the tempo and, and various other factors. As well as counting it as six beats each a quaver long, you can count it as two beats each a dotted crotchet long. Okay, so two beats each of which is as long as three quavers, three eighth notes. Okay, with the stress on, uh, on, on beat one. So if I just demonstrate beating out six, eight, I can beat it in twos in the left hand, one, two, one, two, and six is in the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's put them together. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two. Okay. Now, because we can count 6-8 in more than one way, it's what we call a compound time. Time signatures that are only beat in one way, like 4-4 four, four or 3-4, four, are known as simple time signatures. Okay. Now, 6-8 isn't the only compound time, but it is by far the most common. Okay, so we can get an idea of how 6-8 works in practice. I've used it as the time signature for this week's piece. It's a standard drill you're probably used to by now. You'll find the score in the downloadable PDF that's linked in the description field underneath this video. I'll play it through with the score on screen, okay, so you can't copy what my hands are doing, okay, and then you have to go and kind of work it out from yourself, from the score and from listening to what I've played. Then in, ne in the next tutorial, I'll play it through so that you can check that you've got it right. Okay, I'll talk to through some of the details in a minute, but let's hear it first. Here we go.
Okay, so now we've heard that, let's just keep it up here on the screen and have a quick chat about some of the stuff that's going on. Now, in terms of the basic things that are happening here, like note lengths and Italian expressions and dynamics and things like that, there's nothing you haven't seen before, really. Uh, it's, it's all quite straightforward. Um, the left hand is pretty easy, too. We just have these two alternating chords, dotted crotchets, yeah? So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, down the middle of the bar, or one, two, one, two. However you want to count it. Remember, in six, eight, you have a choice. When I was playing it, I was kind of mentally counting it in sixes, okay? But, but you don't have to. Um, over that left hand, we have this kind of melodic stuff in the right, mostly fairly straightforward. Just notice the way the quavers are beamed, the way we're joining them together with these beams here in groups of three. That's the way we do it in six, eight. You might remember that in four, four, we tend to beam quavers in groups of two or groups of four, depending on how many consecutive quavers we have, eighth notes, I should say, to include the US terminology there. And it's all about, as in 4-4, as in all time signatures, it's about trying to show the beat, and in particular the middle of the bar, clearly. Okay, so here's beats 1 to 3, beats 4, 5, 6, beat 1 or beat 2, however you want to count it. Okay, um, a few little tricky things here, but bars kind of uh, measures 11 to 14, we've got these um, kind of interlocking patterns in the right hand. I've marked the fingering in quite clearly, but... Um, really focus on the evenness there. You don't have to move your hand a great deal. It's mostly just sort of a question of finger independence here. Um, but just um, kind of focus on making sure that each each note of each pair is played evenly. So when you're doing stuff like this, it's quite easy to make the top note sound a little bit louder than the bottom note and so on. And it's, it's really difficult to achieve complete perfection, but get it as even as you can. Now, I said there wasn't much new, but we do have a couple of new things. Um, and the, the main one really is, are, are these things, yeah, these little wiggly lines here. These are arpeggiation marks, okay, and they tell us to arpeggiate each of these chords just in the right hand. The left hand chords aren't arpeggiated. Now, to arpeggiate a chord just means to spread it slightly, okay, play each note in very quick succession, bottom to, not, to top, holding each one down until the whole chord is sounding, okay. So just to kind of, it's almost like strumming on a guitar, okay? It's, but you're holding all of the notes down until they're all sounding. Just have a listen to what I was doing in the recording, yeah? Um, and and you'll, you'll see how the effect works. It's dead easy, and it's quite a, um, you know, it's quite a nice little effect to be able to use sometimes. Um, and then right at the start, and I can't quite remember if we've seen this before or not, but I'll go through it just in case we haven't. We have this marking con pedale, okay? You might see it just as con ped sometimes, um, it's sort of abbreviated. It just means with pedal. Now, when you see a con pedale um, indication, it always, always, always means the sustain pedal, which is the right hand or rightmost pedal on any piano that you'll play, okay? Now, a marking like that, I mean, you, you can get very specific pedal markings, you know, play the pedal here, hold it, hold it down and release it here. But a, a marking like this gives you quite a lot of kind of discretion about how and where you use the pedal, which is handy because different pianos pedals can really kind of vary in ter terms of the precise effect they have yeah, the, the, the precise kind of sound they give you. Um, the sustain pedal basically lifts all of the hammers off all of the strings inside the piano. Obviously a digital piano simulates it, but on a real piano it lifts all the hammers off all the strings. So when you hit a note, not only does it keep ringing it, but it sets off all the overtones in the other strings, yeah? So as well as sustaining the notes you play for as long as you hold the pedal down, you know, at least until they die away, it also kind of changes the quality of the piano sound. It gives you this much richer, more ambient kind of sound. But, 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 beware too much pedal, especially across contrasting harmonies. Because if you do pedal across, across contrasting harmonies um, or, or very busy melodic sections, you, you can kind of end up with a sludgy mess, yeah? Too little pedal is usually better than too much. Now, what I was doing, uh, more or less, was pedaling with every chord change. So, pedal down on the chord, quick pedal up and, and straight down again, okay? It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you, you know, the, the pedal up and down is, is kind of happening just before the chord change, okay? When my fingers are still, um, you, you know, just come off and are about to go down on the 
um, on the next chord and as they go down the next chord I lift the pedal off you need to kind of play around with it and, and get used to it it's kind of a difficult technique to describe but very instinctive once you have the hang of it so play around with your own sustain pedal yeah Sustain pedal does make legato, make smoothness a lot easier and I'd, I'd be especially inclined to use it against these arpeggiated chords here where you're having to, whatever fingering you use there, when I've left the fingering kind of open, you will be having to jump quite a bit, okay? So in order to save yourself having really obvious breaks between those chords, nice layer of sustain pedal here, but again, not constant, you know, lift off just as the new chord is going down. Finally in this tutorial, I just want to teach you a couple of new scales to add to your practice. They are B flat major and G minor. Now both of these are scales and therefore keys that have flats in the key signature rather than sharps. And both B flat major and G minor have two flats in the key signature, B flat and E flat. And that means they're relative to one another, okay? So G minor is the relative minor of B flat major, and B flat major is the relative major of G minor, okay? They're, they're, they're kind of like, they're kind of twins, yeah? Because they have the, key, the same key signature. Let's have a look at B flat first. I'll start off by playing it in the right hand. If you're thinking, oh my, that was a bit quick, don't worry, I'm not expecting you to copy what I'm doing here, I'm just demonstrating. You'll actually find, as usual, all these scales scored out in this tutorial's PDF, okay? So if you're thinking, oh, slow down, Bill, slow down, I don't want you copying what I'm doing here, I want you reading it from the score. Let's look at it in the left hand. And hands together. thumpy up the top there but not too bad now let's look at the fingering because it as you might have noticed it's a little bit unusual in the left the finger that's landing on the B flat is the third okay and the fourth is landing on the E flat that's where we're doing our changes so we're going three four three four and then at the top we just go over on our second nip to nip onto that B flat quickly then come down four three four three in the right hand it's the other way round okay so we have the fourth finger on the B flat and the third on the B flat but when we're starting out rather than starting on the fourth we can just cheat a bit and use another finger I, I just use the second usually but you can use third if you're more comfortable with that so let me play up the scale three four three four three on the B on the E flat four on the B flat three and again, you can go over to the fourth if you want, but easy just to nip down onto the B flat. Now, the difficulty you will have with B flat is putting the hands together. It's one of those, it's, well, it's probably the scale that beginners find is, is a bit tricky for putting the hands together. So the thing to do is if you're struggling with it hands together, really, 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 really master hands separately first, okay? G minor, G minor is a lot simpler, okay? I'll just give it a quick playthrough, but you'll find it in the score. Here's G natural minor. Okay, right hand. And left hand. Okay, and G harmonic minor. As you can see, we've got that that uh, distinctive sharpened seventh note of the scale that has that, that the harmonic minors have. Okay, so you know, um, rather similar to the minor scales that we've already looked at, and, and, and not really kind of as radical as, um, as as B flat major there. So add those to your practice. As I say, don't try and copy what I've just done on the keyboard. That's naughty, okay? What I want you doing is going to the score and working it out and working your fingering out from the score and just using what I've done as kind of a reference. Just as a reminder, in total now, scales-wise, we've got C, G, D, A, F, and B flat majors, and A, D, and G minors in both their natural and harmonic forms, okay? So plenty of scales to be getting your teeth into. 
Don't forget to run through them at the start of every practice session, both as kind of a warm up and as a way to really practice your evenness and control on the piano keyboard, yeah? So that's it for another session. Keep practicing hard, work on those pieces and scales, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, okay? Red button in the bottom right hand corner, and support my crowdfunding campaign at www.patreon.com slash Bill Hilton. We're also kind of getting to the stage where you'll be able to make use of my book, How to Really Play the Piano, which tells you all of the kind of non-formal stuff that isn't covered in regular piano lessons about pop chords and starting out with improvisation and all the rest of it. Just click, link, click the link in the description um, field underneath the video or in the little YouTube card that I'll put in the top right, the little I, little, little letter I, and, and, and that'll tell you more about how to really play the piano. Okay, there we go. Happy practicing, and I will see you in tutorial number 15 next time. Okay, see you then.